So recently, a viewer sent me two great big boxes of stuff. I believe the story was that his uh, dad used to go to Circuit City and just buy all kinds of stuff, gadgets, computer accessories, weird things, uh, and it's all just been sitting up in the attic untouched uh, for years. And uh, he offered to just box it all up and send it to me, and I agreed. So now I have it, and I know some of what's in here, but not all of it. So we're just gonna go through all of it right here together. Also, if you're wondering about the attire and, and the camera, uh, I tried the GoPro on the head routine a few weeks ago and everyone hated it, made people motion sick. Understandable, so people said I should try it on my chest. Um, gonna give that a shot. I do look ridiculous the rest of the time, so I just went ahead and put on the denim jacket as well and now nobody knows what sort of whole thing I'm rocking. Anyway, let's see what's in here. Obviously, I can't just tilt it all out on the desk, so do this one thing at a time. Let's see what we've got here. Oh wow, okay. We have an EasyCam USB 2. So right off the bat, this is a really cheesy box. Like, that feels like such a weird nit to pick, but you can tell the quality of a product based on its box. This is really thin paper. So this is a four-in-one PC camera. They're emphasizing the fourth capability is games. This has Game Cam Special Edition Plus. What would that be? Wait a minute, what? Game Cam SE lets you play inside the game. No joystick, no gamepad, just you? Is, what, is this a motion tracking system? I, I did not know this was in here. So, oh gosh, look at this. Game Cam Basketball, Game Cam Karate, and Game Cab Ghost Lab. Energy bolt, shoot from your hands, defend yourself against the ghosts. It's not just a game, it's a workout. Joysticks are for sissies. So the first thing I pull out of the box is a product I never even knew existed. And it looks like just, just the cheesiest little uh, like Logitech eyeball camera, probably just 320 by 240, 640 by 480 at most. But what could that game cam thing even be like? I'm not gonna be able to demonstrate it in this video, obviously, but I'm really looking forward to see if it works. Oh good, we've got the software. Uh, oh, this is disc one. Okay, good, Reality Fusion, Game Cam SE, and Ghost Lab. There might be two discs in there. Nope, just one. So this says disc one. I don't see a disc two, so hopefully that's everything I need on there. And then there is the camera itself with the longest cord I think I've ever seen on a webcam. Lordy, that's like 10 feet. Now we've got a laptop here, and I know there's several webcams in here, so Let's see if this is just a normal USB video class device. I'm guessing for its age that it won't be. I don't think at the time that this would have come out that they had the USB video class driver yet. Uh, this says it supports Windows 98 or Windows 2000. So this is from 99 or 2000 or thereabouts. So I think we could say it's not from 2001 or later because it would say Windows XP. It looks like it didn't show up in OBS, so I don't think this works without drivers. Not at all surprised. So, wow, I'm really looking forward to trying this out later. Hopefully, uh, I'll get another video out of it soon because they're, it sounds like they're just trying to do like connect, but way ahead of time. There were probably a lot of companies who tried to do that thing, but I'm shocked that they supposedly actually got a product that shipped. You know, I didn't even bother looking at any of the other features on here. Let's see, we've got Live Express video panel, simple to use VCR controls, record self playing video mail. Uh, and then a video composer, so that's like a, a Windows Movie Maker kind of thing. Uh, Live Express, which is just for compressing video for emails. A uh, copy of Microsoft NetMeeting, which I thought was built into Windows at this point. And then you lead Photo Express. So yeah, unsurprisingly, nothing else amazing on there because what can you do really with a webcam other than take pictures and videos? This little pamphlet here uh, says they had some other software, I guess. Presto Video Works, Ulead Cool 360, a um, bunch of other stuff from Ulead. Back in the day, Ulead was just all over consumer video products. They were everywhere. And on the back here, they got a bunch of other cheesy cameras they apparently made. Looks like they have a standalone digital camera and then easy phone cam, probably one of those uh, terrible early uh, video phone options that nobody actually used. So really, altogether, nothing interesting going on here compared to any other webcam, except for the fact that they claim to have like a Microsoft Connect, you know, 12, 13 years ahead of schedule. Really interested to see if that ends up working. I would love to make a video about that. All right, what is next? Oh, oh, whoops. It's just a 430 watt APX power supply. Okay, and now we've got another 
webcam. This is a D-Link DSB C100. Much more than a PC digital camera, a complete audio-visual communications system uh, combines state-of-the-art optical technology and complete audio-visual software at an affordable price. So in other words, it's just a webcam that happens to include a disc with probably pretty much the same programs. Uh, this is sealed, but let's take a look and see what we've got. Oh man, I'm never gonna be able to sell this thing at auction now. Just realize the box says, get closer to start communicating on your PC is in this box. Let's hear that again. Get closer to start communicating on your PC is in this box. I don't even know how that's supposed to read. You know what else? This also says, send video email anywhere you send email right now. No additional receiving software required. You can include a video viewer with each message. Boy, howdy, this thing is definitely from the year 2000 when people were still willing to click an EXE attachment. Oh, look at that. Ooh, wow, okay. So they actually sold this in the like hang tag bubble pack in the box. That's weird, but I guess they only wanted to make one pack for it. So they would have put a different card in here if they were gonna sell it just hanging up at a store, I suppose. We got the manual, of course. Uh, we got the disc with MGI Video Wave and MGI Photo Suite. Yep, I saw that all over the place back then. Uh, and then uh, Smith Micro Video Link Mail. So really no different than the other thing. It's just a webcam with a piece of software for compressing video to email and then some basic video editing software. Uh, probably pretty crummy. The camera itself though is actually, huh, it's kind of better built than I expected. It's got quite a bit of heft to it. I like this little, uh, it's got this little ball joint for adjusting it here. I don't think the cable was that color originally. <laughs> There's a distinct uh, sort of green to it that probably was not intended. I think that the plastic probably degraded. But the rest of this, like, it's made out of, I think, polycarbonate or something. It feels very robust. Oh man, it's got that fresh vinyl smell to it. Oof, the smell of a computer store in 2000, let me tell you. I actually really like this thing. Um, I'm guessing it too is not going to work without drivers. It's probably not a USB video class device. And yeah, sure enough. So I'm gonna have to put this on a, like a Windows 98 machine in order to test it at some point. But you know, pretty much every webcam looked exactly the same until we started getting the HD ones. I do like the design of this one though. It uh, looks much more interesting than all the various Logitech eyeball knockoffs. Next up, we have a WorldTalk internet phone. Now this is interesting. Uh, there are a few different ways they could have done this and I'd done some investigation into some of them before but not all of them. Again, this is sealed so I'm just killing the value by opening it up. Man, I could have made a million bucks off of this in 20 years but I'm doing this for you. This is another one of those extremely thin paperboard boxes and I'm asking myself now if maybe everything used to come in these and uh, they just stepped up their game after Apple started making everyone look like fools with their extremely heavy paperboard. I didn't even, you know what? I didn't even read the box on this thing. Let's see. Make long distance calls for free across the internet. Provides real time two way phone conversations compatible with all internet phone software. Requires Windows 95 compatible full duplex sound card. So I'm kind of wondering if this is nothing more than a microphone and a speaker, I think that's what it is. I think you're expected to have your own software and your own online voice system already, which at the time there were actually quite a few. Um, if this was circa 99 or 2000, oh 97 in fact, even earlier. But there were a, a few different early voice over IP systems uh, that they could have expected you to use this with. So I'm kind of guessing that they didn't include anything of their own and that's what it's looking like. So we've got some Velcro pads here, and then we've got a little manual, and we've got the device itself. So this was a really common design practice with a lot of these like ultra cheesy Taiwanese telephones you could find around this time, the flat handset. It's, it's neither stylish nor is it comfortable. Like this, oh, this is actually like immediately painful. It also weighs a ton. Uh, which means they overcompensated. Uh, if I open this up, I would find that there's a hunk of steel plate in there, lead if I'm really lucky, just to give this heft because all it is is a couple pieces of extremely thin plastic. So thin that uh, you can see the, the warping in it where it contracted in the mold. Uh, and then there's a little electric mic here and the tiniest speaker you've seen in your life. So if they didn't put that steel weight in there, this thing would blow away in like a light breeze. 
but they went too hard and now it feels heavier than even like a Western electric handset from a real telephone. Anyway, here is the base. So they really went all in on trying to make this look legit. Um, oh, okay, so it's got a battery case. So this must actually have its own amplifier in it, which makes sense because it looks like it might have a speakerphone feature. There's what looks like a mic there and a speaker there. Uh, you can bet the echo on that was terrible. So yeah, you can plug this into your computer. It just takes a three and a half millimeter uh, headphone mic jack, so it would plug into any sound card. Uh, and then, wow, it does, doesn't look too terrible, honestly, when it's all put together, but you, you would never want to actually make a call on this. It's, it's awful. But it's basically just um, a loudspeaker and a handset that you can plug into an ordinary sound card, and then you have to solve the rest of the problem. So I absolutely love this world talk internet phone but there's nothing internet about this it's just basically a computer headset in a different shape make long distance calls for free across the internet this accomplishes no such task if you already have that feature then you can use this with it but i guess their whole objective was just to get you to buy this and then find out that you have to get another piece of software to use with it and hope that you'll do that instead of just returning this it's kind of a weird weird scam huh at any rate, terrible product, very poorly built, but who is surprised? All right, three devices and three pretty cheesy ones. What's next? Wow, that sure has uh, got a little, little bit of age on it there. You know, I, I don't even know if this was ever opened up by the original owner or if it just rotted and fell apart on its own. Doesn't look like they cut it, so I think the plastic just crumbled. Funny, it's kind of, uh, it's holding up for me, so I don't know, anyway. All right, web meeting webcam to go kit. Includes everything you need to chat with friends and colleagues on the internet. Uh, you can video, email, video calls. It's the same messaging as all the other stuff, right? All it is is a camera. It's the software that does everything else. But this one is also a portable camera you can use uh, standalone. It says it'll take 27 low resolution pictures. Uh, I can pretty much guess what those look like, but uh, we'll see if we, maybe we can test that. And then it's got a earpiece in here. Oh, okay, yeah, of course it's wired, uh, but Boy, that is, that is really cheap. I don't think you'd want to put that in your ear. I don't want to put that in my ear even to find out what it feels like. That's all just hard plastic. There's no, there's no rubber on there. So you're going to put that on your ear and it's just going to be digging into it the whole time. And then we've got a base back here which has actually been broken off over the years, it looks like. Uh, you got the little proprietary USB cable, I do believe. Oh, yeah, yeah. I guess maybe this predates the mini USB plug. Maybe that was... Uh, USB 2.0 when they introduced that, but it's just got a little, oh, it's actually fairly positive. You know what, this feels better than, than mini USB. Eh, maybe they should have talked to, to these folks instead of the terrible thing they came up with. This guy here is a little sleeve that you dock this thing into in order to put it on the tripod. And then this is the cable for the headset. And there's two extremely leaky batteries in there. So I'm not gonna be opening this up any further. So this takes two triple A's. Uh, let's take a picture, and if I'm able to get it off this thing, I will put it in the video. Okay, battery's in, light comes on. Oh, got a little beep. There are two different buttons on here, so let me uh, take a picture here. I think I'm taking a picture. There's a light blinking. It beeped, and then there's another one on top. What does that do? Okay, so I think maybe that's like a, a self-timer or a video button, and then this one actually takes a snapshot. So if I successfully offload the pictures from this camera, then you're seeing them on the screen right now, and I'm betting they look just dreadful. Next item, what do we have here? Oh, oh, okay. So this thing here is the Glenair ActiveLink Wireless Communication Pack. And at first it looks like it's just like a cellular modem to use with your like Palm Pilot, but in fact, it's for a handspring visor, which is uh, sort of like a Palm Pilot, but different. And it includes one. It's the complete kit, apparently. Uh, and I've never had one of those, so that's fairly exciting. Oh, I notice actually on top, Skytel, a WorldCom company. So is this a, like, cellular or, or like, satellite-based system? Yeah, I have absolutely no idea what kind of system this uses. It just says wireless email and internet connectivity for the handspring visor. Uh, says superior coverage, stay connected inside buildings and across North America. Uh, it says that the, the ActiveLink module receives and stores email even when removed. 
what on earth is this thing and how does it work? I've never heard of anything like this. Yeah, there's no hints on the package of how it functions, but let's take a look inside and see what it looks like. Yeah, so I was thinking that sticker on top that said Skytel was the name of a specific provider, and sure enough, uh, there's a little booklet in here, online services from Skytel. We'll add on the back here, I want my news, custom newscasts from Skytel. So there's a little manual here for Skywriter. Don't know what that is, and it says, welcome to the Skytel two-way system. Uh, we're pleased you've chosen to use the world's most advanced messaging network, but then it doesn't explain what it is or how it works, unfortunately. So I have no idea what this is. It looks like an advanced paging surface. Wow, that's a whole bunch of stuff. There's so much stuff in here, just bits and pieces. Uh, we've got, we got some stickers. Yeah, all sorts of pamphlets. Oh, you can get a wallet. CD in there with handspring software. All right, and then we've got the device itself, presumably. That's a case. Uh, that's a dock. Ah, here we go. And there we are. I admit that I cannot remember the history of Handspring, uh, but from the manual, it looked like this is actually related to Palm. Not sure what's going on there. Don't know how that whole relationship happened. This is weird. Um, this thing was sealed, but there were two sets of batteries in here. One laying in the box, those are Panasonic branded and they've leaked. Uh, and then there's another set here from a different brand, Varda. And you know, those ones have leaked as well, of course. But this one's been folded over and just stuffed in here. So I wonder if Skytel uh, was probably like a value added reseller sort of thing. And they got this kit, put their own bits and pieces in it, uh, and then resealed it to sell in their own little slipcover. Well, anyway, we still have two triple A's here, so let's see if this thing still works, or I guess uh, see if it works for the first time since it was sealed, so it's never been powered up. Yeah, there we go, Palm computing platform. And of course, this looks like every other Palm device I've ever seen. I think this might be what makes the visor special. I'm fairly certain that a normal Palm device doesn't have this uh, slot back here, which is gonna be where this guy plugs in. Wow, that is... A cute little module, look at that. It's like a rumble pack. Finally, I'll be able to feel it when I throw Bowser off the ledge. There's like some rubber leaking out from behind this thing. Some sort of seal must have gone bad. Anyway, so this guy slots in there like a Game Boy cartridge and then crashes the system. No, seriously, that actually just happened. I don't think you're supposed to plug stuff in during the uh, like out of box experience program. So it's not really prepared for you to do that. And I just crashed it. So if I reset it, is it just gonna crash again? Wow, this thing is hosed. It, it won't do anything now. I can't even shut it off. Oh man, this rocks. Yeah, all right, it's fine. I'll have to figure that out later. You know, I hadn't handled any of the early Palm devices, at least not in a really long time. This thing feels really well built. Feels, feels good in the hand. Huh, I wonder why they were successful. Definitely the most interesting thing in the box so far. All right, what's next? We've got... Oh, a three port Firewire PCI card. I'm not gonna bother opening that up because there's never any software in there. There's never any special features. It just is what it is. It works or it doesn't. Okay, we've got another camera. This is the Kensington Video Cam. Wow, that is a really creative name. Just, just pulling out all the stops there. So what do we have here? It's USB again. Uh, PC or Mac compatible, of course. Um, post your pics free digitalfridge.com, wow, that's cute. This was a thing, um, at this time, there were a number of vendors that were trying to get people to uh, buy cameras, video cameras, still cameras, to use with their computers, and they were putting together these free image sharing sites like this. Uh, Sony was actually doing the same thing at the same time with their uh, Vios that had built-in cameras. Now, this is interesting, so, on the side here, it gives the sensor resolution, and uh, not all webcams actually did that. Uh, but this one not only gives it, but it says that it's a Super SIF 400 by 300 sensor. Now, SIF, C-I-F, uh, uh, what is it, Common Intermediary Format? Yeah, Common Intermediate Format uh, was a standard for uh, online teleconferencing that was developed in the late 80s that specified a, a specific picture size. Now, of course, nobody remembers this, but for some weird reason, 
uh, in China, all the electronics manufacturers continued using this as a standard resolution for eons. In fact, you can still buy like webcams uh, that were just from some random Chinese factory that say that they're SIF resolution. And the weird thing is, it's not one you'd recognize. It's 352 by 288. So it's this weird intermediate size. Well, this guy here is Super SIF, which is 400 by 300, just a little bit bigger in both dimensions. I've never heard of that resolution before. I'm kind of surprised. Anyway, same marketing as the other ones. Uh, send snapshots, video email, or make live video calls. So it's gonna have the same software and everything as the other ones we've looked at. The only reason I'm actually bothering to get it out of the box is just because it's got a weird shape to it. Wow, this is a, a really terrible box. I, I actually really hate this box. There's the gadget. It's actually, um, feels kind of chintzy the way they built it. It's kind of strange. Oh man, it's got a, not silicone, but I think like a soft PVC lens cap. I've never seen that before. That's completely new to me. I guess this doesn't seem all that poorly made. I mean, it looks a little chintzy. It's got a strange texture on the plastic, but it's got this built-in tilt feature. That's kind of cool. Um, it's actually got a tripod socket on the bottom and it uh, feels fairly, fairly solid. So I guess that's all right. Again, it's gonna require special drivers, so I can't hook it up and demo it. Uh, we've got a Belkin Classic mouse, which appears to be completely and utterly gen... Oh, no, I'm sorry. Okay, well, it's got something going on here because it's a three-button mouse, and it says it has a programmable center button to perform frequently used commands such as double-click, home, and page up, page down. So that's going to have to be software. Yeah, it's got a driver diskette. This is probably a completely ordinary three-button mouse, nothing special about it, and then Belkin just included a program that monitors the mouse, and if it sees you press the middle button, it injects a keyboard shortcut. Uh, we've got a modem here uh, from a brand I've seen before but don't know much about. This is from Sterling Communications. Absolutely nothing worth mentioning there. Oh, wow, here we go. Now, this one is also equally boring, but it's got a much more exciting design. <laughs> Look at all the, man, 56K. They really made the most of that find edges filter in Photoshop. There are actually some interesting and rare features that dial-up modems can have, so I always check to see if they have them. Uh, they never do, sadly. This one does say that it has some data communications and fax software included, and I'm kind of curious what that is, but not enough to get it all out of the box. Okay, now here's something interesting. This is the Wireless Intelligent Trackball. This has the exact same styling as this guy here. Yep, sure enough, these are both from Interact, a division of Rikaton Corporation, and they're both copyrighted 1997. So whatever we have in here is gonna be incredibly cheap, but I do have to admit that I have never actually seen a wireless infrared trackball before. This one looks like it's probably intended for, you know, presentations, that sort of thing. You know, I see like play, pause, forward, back, so maybe they're thinking of it being used for, for like a multimedia PC, something plugged into your television. That would make a lot of sense given the era. We were trying really hard to make that happen at the time. Wow, this thing is really poorly made. Like, <laughs> the fit and finish isn't just bad, it's, it's kind of absent. Everything's just sort of wobbling all over the place and uh, feels terrible in the hand. There's nowhere to put your fingers that feels right. Uh, and the ball itself feels like it's jammed in place even though this thing is brand new. Uh, the buttons are like sort of riding up here as if this thing got hit really hard even though it's clearly brand new. So. Yeah, it looks like the <laughs> manufacturing tolerances on this were about what you'd expect from the company that produced the World Talk Internet phone. So this runs off two double A's. Uh, it's got two buttons underneath here and then two buttons on top. And I guess you hold it like this. You use your index finger to hit one or the other button by rocking it back and forth. And then you can hit either of the top buttons with your thumb Mm, that's not too great. Also, uh, it's got all these media controls down here, and these just look like your typical like TV remote control with the, the rubber buttons, but it's actually somehow worse than the usual. Like, I don't know how to describe it, but it just, it feels even mushier than a rubber keypad should. I don't know how they achieved that. Now, this is actually called the web.remote, but I don't see what's web about it. It looks like uh, it's really intended for multimedia control, so 
It's kind of peculiar. But yeah, this thing is uh, exactly as cheap as I thought it was. And you know, I'd love to hook it up and try it, but this one, as it turns out, requires cereal, and I don't really have anything handy with a working cereal port. If I knew this was a cereal mouse, I would have brought my, uh, my D620. All right, and then there's one more thing in this box, uh, which is the micro webcam internet video camera. So pretty much the same as all the others. Send snapshots and video mail, uh, custom color face plates. Oh, sure enough, yeah. Uh, it comes with a blue one on it, and then there's a green one and a red one. So this must have come out after the iMac, eh? Same old story, it's got a video capture program, copy a net meeting. Uh, Presto, Mr. Photo's digital camera utility video recorder and then a uh, little image editor. So pretty much the exact same thing as all the other ones. Now there's actually two boxes here. So that was all the stuff from the first box. Let's set this aside and take a look in the second. All right, this is box number two and it feels like it's got less in it. Let's see what we got. Whoa, huh. So this is the My Smart Pad Smart Mouse Pad. Uh, see, outsmart the internet with the My Smart Pad. Smart functions, My Smart specials. Oh, receive exclusive offers and special savings as part of the My Smart community. So, right off the bat, this thing's a scam. <laughs> they were using this for advertising. Uh, what else is new? Wow, no, actually, the whole thing is the scam. Everything on here is talking about my neighborhood, my city. Keep in touch with what's happening in your area. Entertainment, dining, shopping, etc. My Express Checkout simplifies online purchases. This has a smart card included with it. And then check this out. Automatically receive future inserts with valuable savings. They want to send you a, a, like an insert that goes in this thing, which presumably is just sort of a big touchpad kind of thing. I'm kind of curious how the actual mechanism works. Supposedly, they're going to sell you uh, updates to this thing that you can stick in there that, I, I don't know, what would, what, would, what would valuable savings for the insert be? Man, this whole thing is so weird. It's, it's, a, smart, it's a smart card reader and it's some sort of, of touchpad and you put a mouse on it and <laughs> what is going on here? Once again, it's got that disintegrating plastic, but it's not disintegrating quite enough, so let's help it. All right, so it is USB, not some sort of weird cereal thing. Ah. Oh man, oh, it feels so cheap. It's just like this thin, flexible piece of plastic, and it's got a little USB smart card reader up here, presumably, but the rest of it just, oh, oh wow, okay. So it's not any kind of touchpad. I was thinking it might be some sort of like resistive touchpad, but I don't know if you can hear that. It's just got buttons in there. So all this thing is, is just a little keypad with like 12 or 15 buttons on it. And then you can uh, flip this up and take out the uh, insert in here, I guess. There we go. Oh, wow, yeah, there's the mechanism. That's all it is. It's just a, a little membrane keypad. And all this does is, is send I don't know, it's probably key codes or something. This probably just shows up as a USB keyboard and it does like control shift one, two, three, four, five. I'll bet it's something as simple as that. And then this is just a piece of plastic which you shove in there, which allows this company to make marketing revenue off of you. This is absolutely incredible. Now this is interesting. This little cutout up here, I'm pretty sure that's some sort of encoding because it sticks up there and it goes under the edge of the smart card module here. And when you stick it in, there's some resistance and it feels like it's actually pressing on a mechanism. So I think that's actually a little encoder that tells it which card you put in, uh, which is clever. Um, can I open this up? Oh no, this thing is made so inexpensively that they didn't bother putting screws or tabs or anything like that in it. It's been melted closed, it looks like. It looks like there's just uh, like plastic stakes that go through from this side to the other, and they just melted them over to hold it together. So I could open this up, but I'd be destroying it in the process. Let's, um, let's plug it in, though. It might require drivers, or it could just show up as a, uh, like a USB keyboard. Okay, so there's an HID-compliant vendor-defined device in here. I've never seen that before, but I think we can guess that that's what this thing is. Yeah, when I press the buttons, it doesn't do anything. So 
You know, I didn't see a smart card reader up here. So this does have the actual smart card contact pattern on it, but they must just be using it internally rather than uh, actually doing any of the uh, secured nonsense you're supposed to do with those. You know, the software here might work and this machine has a CD-ROM, so let's give it a shot. I don't know if it installs an actual driver or just a program that looks at that HID device. If it's a driver, it probably won't work because this is a X64 version of Windows. Oh, no, there we go. It, uh, it disappeared and reappeared uh, in Device Manager and now it says pad key and insert detected. What virus have I just installed? Yeah, it tried to take me to their website. Unsurprisingly, it's gone. This is gross. There's just this little My Assistant program that hangs out in the corner at all times. I kind of feel like I just installed Bonzi Buddy, but that it won't be able to mess with anything else on my network because it's so old. Uh, fingers crossed, but I should wipe this machine soon. Anyway, it doesn't look like I can make anything else go. Uh, let me press a button here. I think this thing is upset that it can't get in touch with the mothership. I don't think it's going to work at all unless it can phone home. So I think that's that. It's actually a shame that they don't let you customize it because uh, if I could have set this thing up as an uh, AirSats uh, 2001 era stream deck, man, I would have used it for something. Oh, uh, one more thing. Uh, the included insert is interesting. It's actually badged for Quest, which was the local telephone company here until they got acquired by CenturyLink. Uh, but what's on here seems really limited. Like you'd expect there to be links to various like Quest services, but instead I've just got a CompUSA button and then everything else looks like it's uh, just stock MySmart links. So don't really know what Quest got out of that deal. I don't know if I can even get this back into the original packaging, so I'm just gonna dump it over here. Next item. Boy, howdy, there are so many webcams in here. Now, this one is uh, <laughs> kind of spicy because it's from Avermedia, which is actually a legitimate company, unlike most of the rest of those, and it outright says, true 640 by 480 high resolution. And at this time, that was kind of a big deal. It says it was designed for Windows 98 only, so that puts this in, you know, 1998, 99 at most. You know, this might actually be decent quality. Again, it's gonna be USB 1.1, so I'm not gonna be able to use it, uh, so I can't demo it right now. Uh, especially because it actually says on the front here, built-in compression for faster speed display and capture. So that suggests it's actually compressing the video before it sends it over the USB cable, which is a really good idea. In fact, it might even be necessary for a webcam at 640 by 480 to work over USB 1. As usual, it comes with the same old stuff. Uh, Avermedia Intercam Elite. Uh, MGI Photo Suite again, Acer Easy Express Video Mail, video conferencing software. So all these things were for the same purpose and came with the same stuff. Now I had actually, when I made this video, I knew that there were a bunch of webcams in there. I didn't realize there were this many, but I was hoping as I pulled them out, I could just start plugging each one into a machine and have them all recording me. But since they're all USB 1 and they don't speak the standard USB video class uh, interface, I can't do that. So really a bummer, but hopefully I'll be able to uh, like do a little shootout with these later. Maybe I'll put it on my side channel or something uh, so I can see how they all compare. But I'm guessing this one probably looks quite a bit better than the others. I mean, this actually says on the side that it supports YUV422. Most of my video gear doesn't do that. It's apples and oranges, but it's still funny. And it makes the case that Avermedia actually knew what they were talking about and bothered putting specifications on here that whether they really apply or not are nonetheless the things that you'd be looking for if you knew what you were talking about. Next up, uh, what do we have? Okay, so this is a Creative Sound Blaster X5 PCI. Unfortunately, this one is not too exciting either. Okay, uh, this is a Mouse Systems PC Trackball 2. This is a nice looking box. Well, I mean, it's Mouse Systems and they were actually really proud of their product. Uh, at this time, the computer mouse had become completely commodified and almost everyone on the market was being churned out of, you know, random anonymous factories somewhere in China or Taiwan. So Mouse Systems, who I'm sure was also having their stuff produced in Taiwan, yep, made in Taiwan, ROC, was nonetheless uh, still very proud of their product, I believe. Uh, and you could tell from the amount of care they put into actually making the box look good. They got all these screenshots of the configuration software and whatnot. But as for the mouse itself, so it's serial, so I don't have a way to demo it for you. We'd be here for hours if I actually showed off all this stuff, I've, I'm now realizing. So this is actually a blessing in disguise. 
but let's see how this mouse actually feels. So interesting button layout. I thought this would be the middle button, but it's not. This is spicy, but okay. So the ball itself doesn't roll as well as I would have hoped. Um, the buttons are, you know what? I don't like this. <laughs> Didn't take long. Boy, I really don't like this. Like you gotta reach back like that, or are you supposed to, are you supposed to do it like this? Like, is there a picture on the box? I'm not actually sure how you're supposed to hold this thing or which finger you're supposed to use to operate the ball, but either way, it doesn't feel very comfortable and the ball doesn't roll very well. So I had made the quip that um, mouse systems was still kind of full of themselves at this point. Uh, looks like they didn't quite deserve it anymore because this thing kind of feels like crap. Uh, mechanism looks completely ordinary. Uh, the rubber is in good condition. They got little ball bearings down here, so I don't really see what they did wrong. You know, I don't know if this was just a misfire or if mouse systems had really you know, fallen from grace at this point, but I'm kind of surprised by that. I expected this to feel a little better. Okay, we got just a couple more things in here. So this is another wireless mouse, uh, an actual mouse rather than a trackball, and I think I've actually seen this before. Uh, this little receiver here on the back, or if the GoPro's working, that guy right there. I've seen that on someone's desk once before. Now this one is from AOPEN, and I think they're a Chinese or Taiwanese company. There's uh, certainly a lot of uh, kind of confusing language on here. Uh, for instance, it says uh, programmable buttons, lucky jump, net jump, etc., makes operation easy. And I don't know why those words are supposed to make me think it's gonna be easy, because I don't know what either one of those words means. It is a wheel mouse, that's cool. Uh, also, it's not infrared, it's actually uh, RF. Although I don't see anywhere on here what frequency band it uses. I kind of wonder if they used a generic box that could sell it in different countries that use uh, different frequencies. I do notice that there's a sticker on the front that says works in Windows XP. So this must have been released in about 2000. And then when XP came along, yep, right here on the side, it says it supports 95, 98, ME, 2000. So this was right on the cusp. So it says it has 255 user ID codes, no problems with radio frequency interference, but I don't know what frequency band it uses. I'm guessing for this era, it still would have been 900 megahertz. It does look like there might be an interesting utility on here. Um, there's this thing called iWheelWorks that's apparently in the driver disc, and it's a little picture on the side showing scroll wheel controls and then multimedia speaker volume. So if this actually let you tie your scroll wheel to your system volume, man, I would have rocked that back in the day. I would have I loved that. Again, I can't demo it at the moment, but that's, that's actually pretty cute. That's one of the more uh, practical products in this whole collection that I, I actually would have wanted, I think. I think there's just one more thing in here. Oh, there's a couple more things. So, so this is an Avermedia TV98 video capture card. I know exactly what this is gonna look like, but let's just pull it out anyway. Yep, there's the card itself. <laughs> it's got this cheesy sticker on there uh, to let you know which uh, local broadcasting standard it's designed for. This chip here with the sticker on it, it's gonna be a Brooktree 848. Uh, oh, wow, this is actually the better one. This is the BT878. So I believe that's actually one of the better video capture chips you could get. Um, all the same, you know, it just captures standard definition video. What is the second card that's in this box though? There's a, there's a palm scanner interface in here. What the heck? It's an eight bit ISA card, but it has a big warning that says, please plug in the 16 bit slot only. What on earth is going on here? Well, I can't readily figure out what scanner this is for, but this is definitely a uh, proprietary interface card. It looks like a parallel port just because it's DB25, but uh, I'm positive this is something custom. So yeah, I don't know what that was doing in this particular box. Um, I don't see the scanner for it in here or anything. And in fact, I don't even think I have the drivers for the Avermedia. Yeah, I don't. So I couldn't even use this card if I wanted to. Not that there are any terrestrial broadcasts left, although you can put a composite Nest video into it. So I guess it still serves a purpose. All right, and I believe this is the last item. Oh my gosh. This is another of these webcam video email systems, but this one takes itself way more seriously. Look, look at how hardcore this is. Oh, so this is also a video capture card? Watch TV and listen to FM radio on your PC, but it also has the whole like video email Okay, this box is a complete mess. So it says video email extreme. And on the back, it says 
With Cybermail Extreme, you can work on your PC and watch TV, listen to FM radio, record from the TV, radio, camcorder, or include a digital camera. So at first, this sounds like just another one of uh, those webcam kits that we were just looking at. That's just a webcam and a program for recording and compressing video. But this one appears to actually be a complete video capture system. And they say there's a digital camera included, but I wonder if that's the case. I kind of suspect that it's really just a composite camera you're supposed to plug in to the card. But really, video email or cyber mail, they keep mixing the name up back and forth all over the box, is primarily a video capture card, not primarily a video email system. So let's see what we actually have in here. Oh man, look at all this stuff. Uh, there's all this stuff in here. All right, so this is kind of a later model. This is after a Connexant bought a uh, Brook Tree, but this also has a BT878 capture chip on it. So pretty good quality capture for the time. Uh, except in addition, they actually hooked up the FM radio uh, receiver on this one. So it's got a separate input for FM there. And then we've got the same old horrible little boom mic that every single computer had for like 20 years. This, this must plug into a keyboard port uh, to tap off power for something. I wonder if that's for running the camera. I'll bet that's, yep, that's exactly what it's for. Let's take a look at the camera here. Oh, absolutely. So as I anticipated, uh, the box lies outright. It says this is a digital camera. That is false. It is an analog camera. There's the yellow composite cable right there. Uh, but because this is not digital and thus not USB, it needs power to operate. And I guess instead of including um, just a wall wart with a five volt supply, this thing has a little tiny DC plug of the wrong correction for this sort of device. And then you plug it into this guy here and it taps power off of your AT keyboard port if you've got one, but if you don't, then what? Oh, I see, all right, they also had a PS2 pass through. I just didn't even notice it in my hand. Okay, so you plug this guy in there, you plug this into your PS2 keyboard port, and that fires up the camera. Then you loop it back and plug the composite video into the card. You know what? I wanna fire this thing up. Okay, I'll need a PC. That'll do. All right, let's uh, plug this guy in here and into the PVM. And hey, there we go. It's a completely ordinary composite video camera. Who's surprised? Let's see, this thing probably has excellent macro capability. Yep. Yeah, these all these little tiny cameras will focus way, way in as close as you want them to. All right, well, uh, so they completely lied on the packaging. It's not a digital camera at all. And the whole thing just has this weird cheesiness to it. Like, you know, getting the name uh, backwards on the box. Sometimes they call it Video Mail Extreme, sometimes Cyber Mail Extreme. And selling it with the name Video Email when it's really primarily a TV capture card feels kind of weirdly bait and switchy. I mean, it does apparently include uh, Cyber Mail Video Email, which again is no different than, you know, what was included with any of these things. But it still feels like um, they probably had one product they wanted to sell and tried to sell it in the guise of something else. Okay, so that's everything, both boxes. Um, let's see, um, it is all kind of crappy, but that was just sort of the computer store experience at this time. I got the impression from the description of what was in there that it was from about 1999 to 2001 or thereabouts, that seems to be the case. And yeah, I used to go to little computer stores and big ones like Fry's Electronics around that time. And I was fairly young, but I remember everything being kind of crappy. There were brands we know now like Logitech, but their product selection wasn't very wide. So when you wanted to get stuff that wasn't just the most basic product, like a two or three button mouse, you had to go into these brands like Aopen, for instance, that seemed to be all over the place, uh, but I think were much like modern Amazon six letter brands, where it's really just some company that's rebranding stuff coming from a hundred different factories, putting their own name on it, but you never really know what the quality level is going to be. So this mouse looks okay, but I know Aopen had other products that were just total crap, but this was what you had. You went to the computer store and you found Micro Innovations or Aopen or Kensington, and you just bought what was there, and it usually was fairly dismal. And a lot of this looks 
fairly dismal. I'm no less grateful to the individual who sent it all to me. Um, this was fun, uh, I'm glad I got to do it, and uh, there was some interesting stuff in here. I'm really interested to find out what Active Link was. I'm incredibly curious what the uh, like uh, game cam 3D tracking thing in here is. I'm guessing that it's some kind of scam. I'm sure it's not really a connect or anything like that, but super curious to find out what exactly it does do. And hey, maybe I'll get around to testing the wireless intelligent trackball or the Avermedia Intercam Elite and discover something that's worthy of a video on its own. But for the moment, this is all I've got. So thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe. Let me know you like this sort of thing. Remember to turn on notifications if you want to find out when I upload new videos. If you really like this, then consider supporting me on Patreon like these folks here are doing. Uh, most of my stuff doesn't come from generous donations like this one. Uh, it comes from generous donations on there, which actually pay the rent. So I'm really grateful to everyone who's supporting me and to everyone else. Thanks for watching.